Hi, Andy here. The question I've seen a lot lately is why do bond prices fall when interest rates rise? A lot of bonds and bond funds have had fairly sizable decreases in price in the last few months as the market level of interest rates has, has gone up uh, a good amount in a fairly short time. So before we actually answer why do bond prices move as interest rates move, you have to step back and understand what's called the time value of money. Money, dollars, has the unique ability to earn interest. So basic example uh, is if you have the choice to receive, I'm standing here in front of you, and I'll give you $100 today, or $100 in exactly one year's time, which one would you rather take? Well, the obvious answer is you'd rather have $100 today. And that's because you may not know in your head, but the, it's because of the time value of money. Because you can take that $100, you can invest it in something, you can put it in a bank account, let's say, something that earns interest, and therefore in one year's time, that $100 will be something more than $100, because it's gonna be the original 100 plus whatever amount of interest you, you uh, received over that year. So all else equal, for a given amount of money, you'd rather have it sooner, you know, today, as opposed to in the future. But what if um, the, the choice is $100 today or $105 one year from now? Well, what math would you be doing in your head? The, what you should be thinking about is, okay, if I have the choice of getting $100 today, I put it in a bank account, let's say, it's only gonna get, let's assume 1% interest. So in one year's time, it's only gonna grow to $101. Or I can have the option of in one year's time getting $105. So you'd much rather take that. So stepping back in a time value of a uh, time value of money, this is this is how how bonds are priced. So a bond, a basic bond, is nothing more than a series of cash flows that you, the bondholder, are going to receive. Let's assume a very simple bond. It's one hundred dollars of face value, which means when the bond matures, we'll assume it's a ten-year bond. At the end of ten years, you're going to get one hundred dollars returned to you, and that bond is over. Life is done. And let's assume there's annual interest, otherwise known as coupon, uh, of, of $1 per year. So for 10 years, you're going to get $1 at the end of each of those 10 years. And also at the end of the 10th year, you're going to get $100 paid to you in, um, you know, in pr principal value, face value. That's it. And the bond is over. That's all you're going to get. So using the time value of money concepts, again, remember a dollar today is not worth the same as a dollar in the future you basically have to figure out, well, what is the present day value of those 10 different years worth of cash flows in the, from that bond? And that's nothing more than, a, than an interest rate. Um, you know, the interest rate is a variable that, that in effect tells you what the today value is of those 10 years worth of cash flows. And all else equal, as interest rates rise, the present value of those cash flows goes down and vice versa. So, so here's why, let's step back again to our basic example. Um, if you were to get $100 today and invest it at, let's say, 1% per year, that's going to grow to $101 in one year. Or if you can invest it at 5%, it's going to grow to $105, right? So the larger the interest rate, the larger the future value is for a given present value. But it also works on the opposite. The larger the interest rate, the smaller the present value is for a given future value. So think about it this way. If in one year's time, the cash flow you're gonna get is $100, let's think about the current day, the present value of it under two different interest rate scenarios. What if the interest rate for one year is only 1% and what if it's 5%? So if you know you're getting $100 in one year, how much would you be willing to pay for it today if the today level of interest rates is 1%? Well, I'm rounding here, but the answer should be 99 cents because you, you have an option of taking 99 cents, investing it at 1% such that you'll get one cent of, uh, what did I say? No, $99, sorry. You're getting $100 in a year. You can take $99 today, invest it at 1%, and you're going to get $1 of interest such that it's $100 in a year. Or if the interest rate's 5%, you, you, you would, uh, the other options, you can take $95 today get 5% interest, again, I'm rounding, get, uh, get $5 interest, such that in one year's time, it's gonna be $100. So this is easier to understand. I, if you look in the, uh, the notes of this video, I have a link to a video I did, a much more detailed 
more thorough, properly hashed out explanation of bonds and bond prices with examples and a spreadsheet. So this, this makes much more sense because it really is nothing more than math. And it's kind of hard to uh, verbalize math in video form without showing those, you know, th those aids. So definitely check out the video. But the, the point is for a, a given level of future cash flow, the present value, the current value of that's going to be smaller if interest rates are larger because that larger interest rate in effect means more compounding interest along the way. So it takes a smaller amount of present day money to equal a given amount of future money if the interest rate is larger. So that's why when interest rates go up, the, the, the current day, the present value of all those bonds cash flows goes down and the bond price is nothing more than the sum of the present day value of all of its future cash flows. Kind of technical. Uh, if you're not used to, to time value of money and financial math, um, this could be a little abstract, but again, definitely check out the video. But point is, um, you know, over the last few months, interest rates have gone up fairly substantially in a short amount of time. For example, the 10 year United States Treasury bond, which is the bond whose, uh, uh, the bonds interest rate that most other bonds are sort of, or a lot of other bonds are benchmarked off of and, and priced off of, the 10 year US Treasury rate went from about one and a half percent uh, at the end of 2021, beginning of 22, to currently about 2.4%. So about 0.9% uh, increase in, in interest rate in yield in only, what is it, a little over three months. It's kind of a lot. So that's why bond prices uh, have come down fairly substantially over the last few months because interest rates have gone up so much. So that's that. Uh, definitely check out the video. It'll be a great aid to, to this, you know, the video and the link, much more uh, explanation and examples that'll help bring this all together. So hopefully you enjoy this. That's it. See you next time.